Hello and welcome back to my video on um, Kill Team 2021. This time we are talking about Wormblade or the White Dwarf team for the Gene Stealer cult, the newest one. This is actually pretty interesting. Uh, look, I've only done like a re like short read through of this team, so. I've never got any experience in playing this or playing against this yet. So this is just like my first impressions. I might be wrong in a lot of stuff. <laughs> Not wouldn't be the first time. Uh, yeah, let's just look at the team first. So here we go. Wormblade kill team archetype infiltration. Seek and destroy. What blah 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 blah. Um, you bring one leader. Here's the interesting part, and 13 Wormblade operatives, right? Now, the interesting part is that you can bring Keller Morph, Locust, Sanctus Sniper, and Sanctus Talon. You can only bring two of those, right? Because those are the cult agent operatives. Up to two, you can pick two of these. Uh, I think two of them are focused on melee, and two of them are focused on range. So depending on what you want, just mix and match, whatever, right? As for the others, you can bring uh, Brutadep. This is like the basic one, so you can bring any number of these. However, only two Gunner out of these three, and only uh, two Heavy Gunner. Okay, so two Gunners and two Heavy Gunners. All right, let's look at the stats. I don't want the, to waste too much time, like usual. This is the leader. Uh, standard stat line, not really good save, 5 plus save. 8 health, standard for leaders, um, they have access to auto gun, bolt pistol, mastercraft auto pistol, shotgun, web pistol, blah 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 blah, right? So what can you use? Let's see, you have a choice of auto gun only, you have the choice of shotgun only, and then you can choose whether you want the melee and pistols. Uh, because he's pretty squishy, I would say just bring the melee. So for the pistols, you can skip the bolt pistol. Yeah, well, it, it does have pretty good damage. So we, if you want to, yeah, sure, you can bring bolt pistol. But I might suggest bringing the Master Crafted Auto Pistol because it has balance and lethal 5 plus. But then again, even if it has lethal 5 plus, it's only like 3 damage. Might as well go bolt pistol, right? Doesn't have balance, but balance isn't really that great either. Only like reroll one dice. Eh. Or was it reroll once? I forgot, but it's not really that great. So yeah, bolt pistol or the auto pistol, whatever you want, pick whichever, and then just bring uh, power pick because rending. Sure, why not? Gun but useless. Power ball. It's a stun. Stun is like I don't really like stun. It's like very situational. Whatever. Uh, yeah. Oh wait. I have to look at this first, right? Okay, they have uh, all of them have pretty much the same abilities. They have cult ambush and shadow vec no cult ambush ambush mostly. Let's look at that first. Here we go. Cult ambush. So basically, during the first turn, when you activate uh, an operative with cult ambush, you can change the order order. Which is really good. Usually in the first turn you can't change order unless you're using the one of those um, scouting option but for this army you can just change them whatever so you can put them all in conceal and then if your enemy does something stupid in their movement just go uh, engage and shoot pretty good uh, the first time operative is either uh, uh, performs either a fight or shoot in its activation if the order was changed from conceal to engage ooh, very useful in the roll in the rolling one you can re-roll any or all result of one result so this means that uh, you can pick one number so if most of your rolls are ones then you can just say okay i'm rerolling all of the ones if most of your results are threes you can just say i am rerolling all of the threes basically that pretty useful uh, it's not relentless but it's all right preternatural assassin uh, they cannot be given equipment they have four plus info safe and then, when uh, your enemy are shooting against this operative, when rolling the dice, if you're in cover, you can pick one. Either 
you gain one auto success, one more, so it's two auto successes, or you can convert one success, uh, retain one that, oh, no, 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 you can gain uh, a critical save from the auto success, which is pretty good. If your enemy deals a crit, use this. If they don't, use this. Pretty useful, like, defensive uh, bonus. All right. Next, Keller Morph. Now, this is pretty interesting, right? Uh, they have pretty good health. Uh, they have pretty good save for Gene Steelers. Uh, they have this weapon, which is also pretty nice because it's like equal to bolters from far away. Well, they, they do hit on 4 plus from far away, right? But still, pretty useful. And then they, they have P1 and Rending, which is also useful. They have those two abilities, and they have the Heroic Inspiration, which we, uh, basically, if they kill an enemy, uh, yeah, uh, when they kill an enemy, any other friendly operative near the Keller Morph, visible and within three inches, when they shoot, they can retain one of the, uh, basically lethal five plus on one of them. Right? Lethal 5 plus on one of them. And this is to all friendly neophyte near the Keller Morph, visible and within 3 inches, if the Keller Morph kills someone. Pretty nice. Uh, they also have Expert Gunslinger, which means they can shoot twice. This is good. You might say, but why would they want to shoot twice? They need to move. They have APL3. Look at that. Normally it's two, they have APL3, so they, you can just move and then shoot twice. Really good. Or if you need to be more stealth, uh, not stealthy, like s sneaky like, or whatever, just uh, dash out from, uh, from a wall, shoot, and then move back. Pretty good options. Now, the last one is the next time operatives perform a shoot. Uh, for that shooting attack, the short range profile of its Liberator auto stop gains the indirect and no cover. Oh, but loses the AP. Oh, okay. So you can use this to like move forward, move closer to the enemy, use the hyper sense, and then you can shoot using the close range, uh, which will ignore cover. And because it's indirect, ignores if the enemy is concealed behind cover. Pretty good. However, they lose the P1 and rending. So if you want to probably like finish an enemy or whatever uh, that's already damaged, might be useful. Also, they hit on 2 plus for close range. Pretty good. 5 dice. Very deadly. I like the Keller Morph uh, because I just like ranged better than melee in Kill Team 2021. So yeah. Next one is the Brute Adept. This is the standard infantry. Uh, Standard safe like guardsmen, standard wound like guardsmen, standard garbage weapons like guardsmen, they, but they do have shotguns. Uh, but this is only for short range. I still prefer the auto gun probably because you have more flexibility with this. They have the cold ambush, ambush, cold ambush, pretty okay. Uh, neophyte gunner. Now you can only bring one of each. You can bring two gunners, but one of each. The flamer, easy skip. Useless grenade, easy pick because this is still very good. AP one four or five damage for crack, useful. And then there's the Weber. It still have less damage, but they do have lethal five and stun, so it's better than the Flamer, I would say. So yeah, if you're going to bring two gunners, bring one of uh, one grenade launcher, and one Weber. Good. Next heavy gunner for the heavy gunner. Ooh, mining, mining laser is a must, right? 5-6 damage, AP1 heavy, very good. For the second one... Hmm. 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 Second one... You can go either way, I guess. Uh, the seismic cannon is pretty good for the sh uh, short range one. P1 stun, 4-4, four, 3+, four, uh, pretty good. But it is short range. But the long range is, uh, I wouldn't say good because the damage is only 2 2. So it depends. If you want more utility, if you, if you think you can get closer, bring this one. 
if you don't think you can get closer then just bring the heavy stubber it's 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 fine because you don't really have a choice now do you it's better to bring the heavy stubber rather than just bringing like a uh, this a standard per, uh, person yeah just bring them yeah sure uh, icon bearer pretty nice standard stat line for them standard weapons i can bearer skill usually the same signal strike now this one until the end of the turn, for the purpose of the cult ambush ability, this operative is visible and within 3 inches of the friendly operative performing the fight or shoot, you can reroll any or all of your attack dice instead of just one result. Basically, you change the cult ambush from that into relentless. Pretty useful. Uh, next, Sanctus Sniper. I also like this one. However, uh, I just read the FAQ like uh, a day uh, yesterday, and I read that the smoke grenades are now not as potent as before. Apparently, that was since the first FAQ. Uh, I just missed that. So yeah, uh, they're not really that useful anymore, but they're still good. They have nine wounds, three APL, save on four plus. The sniper rifle is is pretty good. It's three six. It looks like three three, but. Crits on, uh, on crits they deal three mortal wound. It's silent, heavy. It's it's fine. The heavy is fine. You have three APL. You can just dash and shoot. Still, you can still shoot once, but whatever. And and again, you can use this. Any of these, you can dash, use any of these, and then shoot. Very useful. Um, the first one is target vulnerability. You, uh, you pay one action until the end of the activation. Uh, you gain lethal 5 plus. Useful. Very good. Uh, second one, if your enemy is mm, behind cover or they are obscured, like smoke grenades or they are further than one inch away from a heavy terrain, then you can use this. Familiar soul sight. You pay 1 AP, you can you can shoot them. You can, you can also ignore smoke. Smoke are much more potent before the FAQ, but now there, you have ways to, to just ignore that, just move a bit. If you can't, then use this, it's fine. Pretty good option. Next is the Talon. Talon is much more melee centric, but they have lethal 4 plus. 4 plus, look at that. 3, 6 damage, hitting on 2 plus. We have stun, lethal 4 plus. Really good melee option. If you really want melee, bring this pretty good um creeping shadow i forgot the creeping uh operative can perform a charge action while it has concealed oh this is very good i love this and then there's the familiar soul sight uh what oh oh okay so it's the same name but for them it gives them brutal and balanced very good if you want melee attackers, yeah, bring this. Pretty good. Next one is the Locust. Locust is more of like to annoy your enemies. They're they're pretty, still pretty deadly. Uh, hitting on 2 plus, 5 attacks, uh, 4, 6 damage, lethal 5 plus, And they can shoot within 3 inches only. Mm, they have the Duelist. Which is uh, if you attack first, right? Each time this operative fight in combat in the resolve successful hit step, you can resolve one successful hit before the... Oh, even if you're the defender, you can resolve one hit before the attacker. But you have to parry. Eh, it's alright. Pretty good. Adds more survivability, I guess. And they do have 2 plus and 5 uh, rolls, so that's pretty good. And then they also have Expert Swordsman. Uh, they can fight twice, which means you can charge and then fight, fight which is very good and then uh, each time after this operative fight in combat it can perform a free charge action Ooh, so if you let's say uh, yeah even if it has done so during activation so they can you can usually use this like let's say you charge fight once kills a target and then you can charge for free and then fight again essentially killing two targets very good they're like they have less damage potential than the talon, but you can kill two targets 
if uh, if you're fighting more like horde type list, use this. If you're fighting more like tougher targets like custodies, use this. Yeah. Uh, next is the Quicksilver Strike. Pay one AP once during once this turning point. I, I guess that means once during this turning point. Uh, yeah, you can use this once per turn. Well, whatever. You can only use actions once anyway. When an enemy uh, operative is performing a normal move or dash, within 3 inches of this operative, you can interrupt them, basically. But you have to use this first. You have to set this up first. Uh, you can interrupt that action. You, can, uh, you just free charge them. And if this operative is concealed, change it to engage. And they you basically interrupt their action. They don't finish their move. And then you perform free fight action. Very good if your enemy is not careful. But this is very situational. Most of the time, I would think this is mostly just going to be to deny your enemy movement to a certain area. However, if you're close enough to the enemies, you might be able to just use uh, this to maybe fight once or twice and then kill someone and if you have multiple other enemies nearby you can set this up however if they just charge you then uh, this is not useful i don't know very situational whatever next uh equipments uh, should i check equipment first or ploys first yeah whatever equipment uh, standard frag grenades, whatever, and then you have blasting charge, uh, which I think is pretty much no. This is not the same as a uh, crack grenade. This is like a an even better frag grenade, I guess. It has three four damage. Yeah, I think so, but less blast, uh, less radius. Okay, whatever. Next one, flash visor, one EP. Uh, when the operative is activated, you can ignore all modifiers to its APL. Situational, but maybe useful for the guys with three APLs. Uh, spotlight, while an enemy operative is visible to and within six inch of a friendly operative with this ability, that enemy operative cannot be obscured. Ooh. Interesting, but I don't think it's worth three EP. Uh, called Talisman, two EP. Once per battle, when a shooting attack is made against this operative, in the resolve successful save step, you can change one of your retained normal save to a critical save. If this is every time, then it might be useful, but 2 EP for once per battle and this? Hmm, situational. I don't, I don't think so. Climbing equipment. Actually, I would really love this one. I like this one. However, you cannot give equipments to the... Uh, preternatural assassins so yeah i guess they thought about the balance a bit because if you can give climbing equipments to the sniper that's just freaking broken so yeah considering most of the long range attackers with this army is not really that great maybe you can just give this to the gunners probably not heavy gunners because it's heavy you you're not you won't be able to shoot but you can give this to the gunner Give it to the grenade launcher. Yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? Pretty nice. Uh, cult knife, they have better melee weapon, I guess. 4 plus 2, 3. What's the normal one? It's a uh, gun butt. 4 plus 2, 3. What's the difference? More attacks, I guess. Yeah, 4 attacks. For only plus 1 attack, 1 EP, useless. Just bring grenades. Uh, I would say bring grenades or br bl bring blasting charge or even flash visor if you want to or spotlight but yeah not really a lot of useful equipment options I would say uh, blasting charge is an interesting choice yeah uh, use this bring this I guess bring this maybe bring this if you have like a very close range uh, model like uh, maybe normal normal brood whatever it was with the shotgun. You give him shotgun and you give him that. Pretty good. Uh, next is the ploys. Uh, for the tech ops, just read it yourself. I'm too lazy. Uh, spec ops, I don't really care. I don't really play that yet. Mm, let's check the ploys. Ploys should be up here. 
There you go. A meticulous plan. One CP until the end of the turning point. Each time a friendly neophyte activated. If it's concealed, it can perform mission action or pickup action. One last action point to a minimum of three. Ooh. However, you can only use this once. I'm guessing this is once per battle. Yeah. All right. Pretty useful if you really need that like free action to to gain the advantage to gain the v, the VP. Pretty good. Uh, one with the shadows, one CP until the end of the turn when determining line of sight from an enemy operative. Okay, if that friendly operative has concealed, light terrain is obscuring. Ooh, this is good. This is good. This is not for when you're behind cover, but when you're further behind cover. This is so good. This is so good. What the hell? This is so good. Yo, you'll have this on at all times. Unless your enemy is on like a vantage point, they can't shoot you. Wait, even if they're behind vantage points, they still can't shoot you, right? Yeah. That ignores light terrain cover, but I don't think that ignores obscurement. Very good. God damn. They can't shoot you and you can still shoot at them. This is really good. Have this on any every time. Rising ingress. Uh, place one of your ingress token within one inch of a terrain feature, no more than one inch thick, like uh, the, the, like the barricades, I guess. Until the end of the battle, friendly wormblade operative can move through that terrain feature as if it were not there. Oh, you can ignore like a barricade. Pretty good, but only once. Oh, you can use this once. I guess you use this like in the beginning of the game or sometime in the middle of the game. But that barricade, that particular barricade can always be passed through by your operatives for free. Basically, it doesn't cost one additional circle. Pretty good. You can just block one place, like one, one, one lane. You can block it with a barricade when you deploy the barricade. And then you use this. Pretty useful. Uh, and then the crossfire. Each time friend operative makes a shooting attack, if the target has not been incapacitated and does not have a crossfire token, target gains a crossfire token. Okay. And then each time it, you shoot, and if that target has a crossfire token, when you roll, uh, you gain one auto success. Pretty good. Does it worth one auto uh, one CP? Yes. It, yes, it does. I guess. Yeah. Sure. Because this works for everyone. And then you can focus fire too. Uh, pretty useful. Use this and this. Very good. Tactical ploy. Slink into darkness. Pay 1 CP. If it has engage order, change it to conceal. Okay. You can use this tactical ploy for each friendly operative once. What do you mean? Once per game or once per turn? Well, you can only use this once per turn anyway. So I'm guessing this is once per game. So you can't slink into darkness multiple times. Sure. Um, coiled Serpent, 1 CP. The f uh -huh. When friendly operative is activated and its order changed from conceal to engage. Okay, that's easy. The first time they fight or shoot, when rolling, one normal hit is a critical. Hmm. Yeah, it depends on when, if you use it or not. Uh, use this for the melee centric ones, like the what do you call them? Uh, the the assassin. Yeah, very good. Unquestioning loyalty, one CP. Um, use this when the leader or cult agent operative select as the target for combat. Select one other friendly locust or neophyte operative, excluding leader, within three inches of that friendly operative to intervene. If that intervening operative is not within engagement range of an enemy, you can interrupt that combat to perform a free charge, but it must finish that move within engagement range of the enemy. If that intervening is already engaged with that, with that enemy, it becomes the target. Oh, okay. Wait. If it's not within engagement range, they charge and that's it. Just stick to the enemy. But if they are already sticking to the enemy, base to base with the enemy, then the enemy must target them. Okay. 
Okay. And most of the time, it'll be this then, the, the top one. You gain free charge to that enemy. Okay, pretty useful. But uh, I, I, situational, but it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. Hiding, 1 CP. Uh, use tactical ploy to set up operative step. Uh, okay. And, and the beginning of the game then, basically, you pay 1 CP when you would set up operatives. Okay. Select up to two friendly neophytes to be set up hiding instead. In the firefight phase of the first turn, friendly operative hiding have a group activation of one, are considered to be within the kill zone for activation purpose, and can be activated as normal. Okay. When a friendly operative hiding is activated for the first time, set it up with an order of your choice anywhere in the kill zone. Oh, okay, pretty cool. It's like a like, like, like deep striking. Uh, anywhere in the kill zone within six inch of your group zone and more than three inch from enemy operative. That operative is treated as having performed a normal move action. Okay. And then continue its activation as normal. Ooh, give this to the sniper. Give this to the sniper. Yeah, if you have like a vantage point six inch away from your drop zone, just give this to the sniper. They immediately deploy on the top. But they can't shoot. Hmm, yeah, that's a problem, isn't it? Huh, well, I guess whatever. Still useful for positioning. Like, this is for the first per turn anyway. Usually people don't shoot in the first turn anyway. So, yeah, could be useful. Any hiding operative not activated by the end of the first turn are dead. So you have to deploy them in the first turn. 1 CP, 2 friendly. Pretty good. You, uh, like, interesting ploy. Yeah. As usual, like the other white dwarf uh, teams, they have interesting ploys. So yeah, we already saw the equipments, the ploys. I think they are pretty good. They're pretty strong. Like their stat-wise is meh, like the, the, the normal guys are meh. But otherwise, it's pretty strong. Oh, I forgot to look at this. Uh, other than the gunners, the normal brood adepts have GA2. So we have to activate them two at a time. If you have uh, an even number, if you don't, then yeah, just one for the last guy. Mm, yeah, overall, I think they're pretty nice. Uh, this is very good with the shadows, and the crossfire rule is also pretty good. Uh, the specialists are very good. I like the color morph and the sniper. I might just bring those two if I play, but I don't play uh, GSC. I'll just, yeah. Pretty useful. If you want melee, then use the Locust and the Talon. They're pretty deadly. Yeah, nice team overall. Nice team. All right then, that was the Wormblade GSC team. Um, I don't know what I'll take a look at next. Maybe other White Dwarf teams, if you want me to do that. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it then. Thank you for watching. Uh, please leave a like, uh, subscribe, leave a comment if I assumed something that was wrong or I did something dumb, which is a high, there's a high probability of that. So, well, whatever. All right. Thank you for watching and see you all next time. Bye.